Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex, and today we're taking a look at Gibbon Beyond the Trees on the Nintendo Switch. A bite-sized adventure with a powerful message, how does it perform on the Switch, and is it worth your cash? Well, hit subscribe, join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily, and let's get started. The story then is by far the most impactful area of Gibbon as he expertly crafts a strong but wordless story set around our title Gibbon. What starts off as a routine day in the forest, it quickly takes us through a world that is facing destruction including tycoons moving in, towns appearing, poaching and climate change. It's all reinforced then with a lost young Gibbon who you must attempt to rescue. It's definitely not complex, but its point, as I say, is powerful, and no doubt, as intended, those that jump in, they will feel the weight of the actions we are seeing unfold in front of us. Gameplay then and Gibbon Beyond the Trees started its life on Apple Arcade, and with that factored in, it's relatively simplistic in its control scheme. I would describe it almost as think an auto runner, though, with a little extra input. The controls though they go like this, press the left trigger to run or slide if you land on a sloped surface. Use the right trigger to swing whether that's off branches, buildings or even a friend or family member that joins you on this adventure. And then finally use the d-pad for a backflip that will grant you a speed boost or simply drop from the branch. What's unique here though is the difficulty very much increases with the destruction and the location. Less trees means less areas to connect to and of course also more obstacles in your way. The only real challenge to the controls themselves is really around timing. You need to release at the right moment to release from a branch or let go of sprint to jump ahead of you. Far from complex but it definitely adds in just a tiny bit of variety. That is though honestly my first issue, on the Apple Arcade no doubt the simpler the better but on the Switch feels just a tad uninvolved. These often incredible manoeuvres are occurring in front of you on screen but I never felt like I was really doing all of that much to kind of influence what was occurring. You know it's auto connecting and it's more a case of will I hit a branch or a ledge or something I grab onto or do I need to simply hold down sprint for this next section. It then tries to dial up the tension with poachers later in the game and that somewhat worked for me, there's like chase sequences, but that's more about dialing up your re you know, response time slightly over anything else and keeping yourself off the ground. Here though is the big issue currently with Gibbon, that is going to be frame rate issues. From the moment you load it up, you're going to notice fluctuations. The opening level or so will see some drops the region of 25 but the further you get the worse it gets. By the time I hit the final stage in this hour long adventure I saw as low as 18 frames per second. It even has the occasional freeze for a split second here and there as it seems it's loading in the next section of the game. It is though honestly an experience that should be about the smoothness of movement so this is a huge issue for it. When it works so it looks great but it's constant and it breaks your connection to the game and even at moments adds extra challenge. I missed a couple of grabs because of it. This absolutely needs to be a priority for the team because it's absolutely letting the experience down. The only other area to gameplay then is a mode called Liberation. The idea here, free a collection of animals in this world but the problem here it moves you into the more complex stages quicker which means you'll feel the frame rate drops quicker as well. Visuals then, and I really like what they have to offer here, a 2D hand-painted visual style that does a great job of reflecting the different environments from lush jungles to cityscapes. It's color palette here, a clear reflection of destruction, and it just looks generally really strong. It's also accompanied with some great camera transitions as it zooms in and out. Think though in its style almost low texture detail, it makes everything pop though and given the speed we move, the colours actually really help to keeping track of your location on screen. No visual complaints, I think they use the visuals as a support to the story and that style absolutely works well. Audio then and the music solid throughout, it plays into the theme of each stage becoming more dramatic with progression, it's definitely a nice 
accompaniment to the action and you know the destruction that is occurring it's high quality as well in regards to its production quality and it's all supported then with environmental sounds think nature construction foot traffic and things like gunfire So the final verdict and Gibbon Beyond the Trees is a game I've been excited for. I saw some footage of it some time back and I'm a fan of a narrative driven experience. It's also unique in the sense it's wordless and they worked with locals and charities to ensure it delivers you know, its narrative with complete respect and I think in that sense they absolutely delivered it's no question powerful stuff. Unfortunately though in its current state the gameplay loop is not only a little too simplistic in my opinion to make you ever feel truly in control, but it's also then hampered by a frame rate that gets progressively worse throughout the gameplay and it's there from the opening level. That simple gameplay as well would be so much more rewarding if it was giving you super smooth acrobatics, but instead we're just being greeted with those constant fluctuations. Clocking in then at just a one hour runtime as well and no doubt this might be on the short side for many out there with a price point of around 10 bucks or your regional equivalent. Been really struggling to attach a score to this one but I just don't think it's currently where it needs to be to be you know a truly enjoyable experience even if the narrative is incredibly well done. With that in mind today it's a below average 4 out of 10 from me. So honestly, this is the last game I wanted to give a low score to honestly, but there's just too many issues in this current build, especially when you factor in how short the experience is as well. Look, you're going to feel the emotional impact of that narrative. Again, it is fantastic, but I do need more from the gameplay. I need more from the performance. Fix up that frame rate though, and I'd easily actually be pushing this honestly to a 6, maybe even is 7 out of 10, that is if you don't mind its simplicities in its interactions. Will you be adding this one to the library then or holding onto that cash? A shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It helps more than you know so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch. As much as we all do here, join our growing family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.